So if you're planning on park hopping, you can start lining up before one o'clock, but as you'll see, they actually keep the gates closed until one. So this is what the Esplanade looks like at one, or just before 1 p.m. A little bit of a line starting at California Adventure. And lots of lines starting at Disneyland. Last time I came here, I really just wanted to be back at Disneyland. I think it was just missing that magic that Disneyland has. But this time, I'm actually really excited to come back to California Adventure. So I do plan on spending the rest of the day here. And I've got a mobile order for lunch in about an hour. So I'm gonna head towards the pier and just see what rides I can get in in the next 60 minutes. I had an immediate change of plans. Originally I had a mobile order for two, but I just got on the walk-up list for Carthay Circle, the Alfresco Dining Lounge, and I'm so excited. I've been trying to get reservations there since reservations opened. I'm at Carthay Circle. I was able to join the wait list. I'm so excited. I've been trying to get reservations here forever. I have a gorgeous view of the main roundabout in California Adventure. And I got a tequila daisy and a spring salad to start. I haven't eaten yet today, so I'm planning on eating a lot during my lunch. So that spring salad was absolutely delicious. And then the tequila daisy. It's kind of like a very light margarita. It's got Don Julio tequila, Contro, creme, creme vet violet liqueur, fresh lime juice, organic agave nectar, and egg whites. It's really delicious. Got the catch of the day, which is cod. There's a tangerine lemongrass essence. That's the orange jus that is surrounding the fish. And then it's got asparagus slices, avocado, and mandarin oranges. It's also a miso glazed cod. And I've had one bite, and I'm not usually a huge cod fan, but it is delicious. Like, it is so soft and flaky, and it just melts in your mouth. I'm very much enjoying this meal. This is the double pear martini, and it has a it has double cross, absolute pear vodkas, pear nectar, and fresh lime juice. And it's complemented with a marinated baby pear. So I got the strawberry sorbet sundae, and it has strawberry sorbet topped with California strawberries and some shortbread crumbles topped with more sorbet, more strawberries, also some chantilly cream, and then finally topped with more chantilly cream, more shortbread crumbles, and a strawberry syrup. So there is a whole lot of strawberry going on in there. Well, I just had the most amazing meal at Carthay Circle. Everything I ate was delicious. The salad that I started with was very fresh. It had lots of flavor. It wasn't boring. It was different than any other salad I've had before, which I loved because I, I make a lot of salads at home and they always taste the same. So that was really nice. And then the cod that I had, usually I see cod as a base, basic fish. This was delicious. It had so much flavor and it was very light and flaky. I definitely would recommend trying their seasonal catch or catch of the day. It was amazing. And then just because I wanted to try out everything, I had the strawberry sorbet uh, sundae, I think it was. It was basically a strawberry shortcake turned into a sundae and it was so good. It was very light and refreshing. It had um, shortbread crumbles, so like shortbread cookie crumbles, which I love shortbread cookies or biscuits if you're in England. And the strawberry sorbet was very tart and fruity. It had fresh California strawberries and then chantilly cream. And then all of that was topped with more shortbread crumbles. So I just got out of Mickey's Phil Her Magic in California Adventure. And I love Mickey's PhilharMagic. I go see it every time I'm in Magic Kingdom over in Disney World. And I was a little nervous that the PhilharMagic over here was going to be missing a very key element, but it has all the elements. So I have to say, if you're in California Adventure 
and you've never seen Mickey's Philhar Magic, please go see it. It is very easily missed. I don't even think people know it's there because it was so empty, but it's a great way to get out of the heat for a little bit. I think it's like a 10 minute show. It's 3D. I actually think the picture quality is a little better here than it was in Magic Kingdom. That could be because I haven't seen the one in Magic Kingdom for over five years, so maybe they've changed it. But if you're wondering where it is, let's see. Just over here is where Monsters is, the Monsters Inc. ride. And it's just in this building right here. I don't know, that probably wasn't helpful at all. But it's between Monsters Inc. and the award wieners, the restaurant, or like the uh, quick service dining. So it's in between those. It's where they used to show the movie previews for new movies that were coming out. And it, it really is fantastic. Please go and see it if you haven't. So I was going to head over towards Cars Land, but then I saw that Thor was out. What? So I'm just gonna take you guys very quickly over to see him. He's got his hammer. The very cool backdrop too, I really like that. I see uh, Black Panther, Spider-Man, Iron Man. Who else? I see Black Widow. It's got all of them. That's really cool. doesn't get a lot of love because everyone comes here for Radiator Springs which is an amazing ride but all of the rides in Cars Land are worth going on if you have the time. Look how cute all this is. They do a dance to the music. The song isn't the same every time and you can see they're not on tracks. So I'm going to go on Goofy Sky School. This is a ride that regularly gets passed over by adults who are traveling alone or groups of adults. But it is deceivingly thrilling. It's one of those rides where it looks like it might be a kid's ride, but then you go on it and you feel like you're gonna be thrown from the vehicle throughout the entire duration of the short ride. So if you prefer thrilling rides and you don't like going on what you think are kiddie rides, I definitely recommend that you give this one a try. I'm on Jumpin' Jellyfish right now and this is definitely a younger kid ride, but I like to do it every now and then because you get a great view of Pixar Pier once you get up in the air. So as you can see, the view is really pretty from up here. This is why I go on it. For no other reason to see, than to see most of California Adventure from up high. But oh my goodness, it is such a beautiful day today. It's so nice to come out here before it gets too hot in the height of summer. So I don't have any real game plan right now. I'm just walking through Pixar Pier and I'm just gonna check out the wait times and if something looks good, I'm gonna jump on it. I think I'm gonna go on Pixar Pal Around. I haven't been on this in years. So I'm definitely gonna go on it now. It's only got a five minute wait, it says. So for those of you who don't know this ride, there are two options. You can go on the non-swinging gondola or the swinging gondola. I didn't know what the swinging gondola was the first time I went on it. And oh my goodness, did it scare me. I thought that I was like legit falling into the water. But it's, it's a lot of fun. It's different than any other Ferris wheel that you might go on. And I like that they have a non-swinging option as well, if you're a little bit afraid of the swinging option. So I am on 
Pixar friends pal around. I'm on the swinging side. The Ferris wheel is gonna start going around and I'm on the swinging side. So not only is it gonna go around in a circle, it's also going to like drop and swing. Plus you get a really great breeze and amazing views of the park. But I can see from here, I can see Space Mountain, the Matterhorn, all of Grand California. Are we gonna start swinging soon? <laughs> it started swinging! <laughs> that ride back when it was California screaming it took off on the magnetic start and got stuck at the very top of that first hill and we got stuck there for about a half hour and they had to come and I think they were all got attached to harnesses they climbed up the side of the roller coaster and then they brought these special little stools and put them next to our cars and helped us get out of them I didn't ride it again for about six months after that and I was coming to the park at least once a week. So have you ever noticed that the Pixar lamp moves? Of course now that I put it on camera and I said it's gonna move, oh there it goes. I thought maybe it was gonna get shy. So I'm very excited. I just found out today actually that I'm gonna get to stay at the Grand Californian I've never stayed there. I've eaten there a few times, and I've never actually stayed in the park when I'm going to the park the next day. So I can't wait to stay here and use this entrance, because as of right now, this entrance into the park is closed, but later this month it's opening back up to resorts guests. So if you're staying at the Grand Californian, you can actually enter straight into California Adventure from there. Okay, I know I already rode Little Mermaid once today, but I'm going on it again. Maybe I'll go on it again after that. When it comes to dark rides, I can't get sick of them. I can go on them over and over and over again, all on the same day. I got an idea. I'll start at the beginning. I was born from a small of rides that look like they're for kids but are actually a ton of fun. We're gonna go on Mater's Jamboree. So this ride, I feel like a lot of adults skip it because it looks like it's for little kids. But if you go on it, especially if you don't fill the car up, make sure you leave some room. You slide all over the place. And I don't know, it has me in fits of giggles every time I ride it. Plus it's so cute. Mater. of not filling the car up and you don't hold on you get thrown around on every hard turn it actually turns into a more thrilling ride than just a little kid ride and I always have fun in that and every time someone new comes to the parks with me 
I make sure they go on that. They always kind of look at me questioningly and then they, they ride and they understand. So let me know, do you prefer these traditional travel vlogs in Disneyland where I just take you through the park with me and you get to see what rides I go on, what food I'm eating, and then whatever little shops I'm ducking into or trivia I want to point out? Or do you want me to do more themed videos or a mix of both? But I'd really like to know what all of you viewers would like to see as well. Because this channel is still new, so it can go a lot of different ways. So I got my last meal of the day. It is the Impossible Cheeseburger Mac and Cheese. And in it, it's got cheddar and American mac and cheese topped with crumbled plant-based meat and special burger sauce. The special burger sauce smells a bit like mustard with a bit of like horseradish. So I don't know. I'm gonna try it because I ordered it. See how it tastes. Here goes nothing. Okay, so I've got a little bit of everything on this bite. It's pretty gooey looking. It's okay. It definitely tastes like a cheeseburger mac and cheese, which is what it says it is. So that's good if you want that. I was hoping it would taste more like the impossible mac and cheese that I got during the Touch of Disney event. That was really good, but this isn't bad. It's definitely gonna be very filling. It's got a little bit of protein in it. And I love every time they make the mac and cheese and they put that little like bread crumb on top. It's so crunchy and it just adds an extra little bite, I guess. I don't know if I'd get it again though. A little bit too much flavor going on with that special burger sauce. But it was only $7.49 and it doesn't look like a lot but because it's full of cheese and it's got like fake meat in it and pasta, it's actually going to be pretty filling for not that much of a price. So if you have a kid or someone in your family or you like cheeseburgers and mac and cheese and you don't mind trying them together, for $7.50 I say it's worth a try at least. Have you ever sat down for a little bit and thought, my feet don't hurt anymore, I'm ready to walk, and then you get up and realize that your feet actually hurt more than before you sat down? Well, that's where I am now. So this walk out of the park, down downtown Disney, and then eventually back to the car might make my feet divorce me. And I say that I learned my lesson, but I'll probably wear the wrong shoes to the park again next time. We'll see. That's it, my friends. I hope you enjoyed this day at the parks with me. The next time I come to the parks, we're gonna spend some time in them at night. Hopefully we'll go on some of the rides that we missed during this visit. And who knows, maybe some more rides will be open. And last but not least, or actually, it might be least, I have a new series coming to this channel. I'm really excited about this one and also a little nervous because it's definitely gonna put my talking skills to the test. 